Good morning, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I am your host, Elia Pierre. And we're going to start this episode off the same way we start every episode off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, and the fact that you spend it with us truly does mean the world to me, so thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. Everybody, Key Simpson here from Neural Toyota. Uh, just a quick chat about uh, the wonderful community we live in here. As you guys know, we support the oil barons. We've done the drive in movie theater. We're involved in the uh, marathon here in Fort McMurray and make sure we're taking care of the kids and all the local businesses, all the local charities, and all the local foundations, guys. That's what makes this community such an amazing place to live. All right, and we're back. Big shout out to Noral Toyota, our key sponsor, Nimmer Fad. Keith, all the boys and girls down at Noral, thank you for the support. Now, as everybody knows, I don't introduce my guests because they can do a better job of that than myself. So, sir, can you please tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? Uh, how's it going? Yeah, my name is uh, Ross Gerkovitz, and uh, my alias is R. Biggs. And yeah, I'm a DJ producer uh, based out of BC. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'm here for a show at the Starlight Theater with uh, Affinity Experience. Okay. And yeah, it's going to be a good time. Uh, shout out to uh, Brad at Affinity and uh, Hunter as well. Nice, man. Be out here. So how does this happen? You're in Vancouver. <laughs> how do you get a phone call? How does that whole process work to get here to Fort McMurray? Yeah, okay. So um, yeah, basically, I played a, I played a festival for uh, Affinity Experience last summer. Okay. So that was kind of my in. I got to know the guys and they're like really good crew, really good team. And uh, yeah, so they set the show up, and uh, yeah, kind of the kind of music that I make and play fits the bill. So here we are. Okay. Now I got a question. I have only started recently going to these type of shows. Okay. And town is trying to get me to go to a rave this summer. Yeah. Or uh, not a rave, sorry, a festival. Yeah. Give me some advice on a festival. What should I be looking out for? What's it going to be like? He's talking about two in BC. One's called Squamish, I think. Okay. Yeah. And I forget what the other one's called, but there's yeah. four throughout Canada. Yeah. What's the festival life like? Uh, festival life is awesome, man. Um, it's usually just a good time camping with your buddies. Uh, great tunes, great music, uh, good people most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, the vibes are immaculate. Like, um, yeah, it's basically just a camping festival with your buddies. Okay. Stuff like that. So, yeah, drink your water, eat your food, and have a good time with your friends. There we go. Yeah. Now, how did you find yourself into this world? Uh, I came from a, um, a musical background. I played in a metal band uh, in high school. What instrument? Uh, I did bass and backup vocals. Okay. Yeah, so um, so that kind of got me into the music thing. I did a bit of piano when I was younger, and then, um, yeah, I started DJing, and then I also got into producing around when uh, the pandemic started. Okay. And, uh, yeah, here we are. So I've been making lots of music, and nice. uh, it's starting to pay off. Well, I think a lot of people during the pandemic, like, you're stuck in your house, you yeah. can't go out. What are you going to do to kind of get through those hours. Yeah, it was a great outlet for sure. Yeah, yeah no yeah. doubt. Yeah. And so were you performing prior to the pandemic? Uh, performing, not so much. I was uh, doing a little bit of like DJing and mixing and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, yeah, I kind of took the time to hunker down and just start making music. So when mm -hmm. things started opening up, uh, I'd be in a position where I'd be asked to come out to shows like this and stuff like that. So. And is that something that's kind of in your industry in regards to, there's, I know there's a difference between somebody who produces and makes yes. and this, this is DJ. Yep. Do you find that when you are producing and making, there are more opportunities that come in your direction? Um, it depends who I think you're working with. Because okay. like there's people that like, you know, if you're a good DJ, you're a good DJ. And then there's also people that, you know, if you're a producer, you kind of do have a leg up on just the DJs, that kind of thing. Right. Because you do, you do put more time, more money, more effort into producing your own sound. Right. And um, yeah, it really pays off well. Because like, when you're playing your own music mm -hmm. in front of a bunch of people, it's a lot different than playing oh, yeah, no, two tracks together. Right. You know, right. like when you're playing right. your stuff and you can see the crowd moving and stuff like that, it's really great. What's that, you said it's really great, but what's that like to actually create something and physically see the reaction to it it's super awesome man it's it's honestly like a drug you know yeah. what i mean like it's crazy yeah yeah like when you see pe when you look out there and you see people vibe into the stuff you've made it's it's absolutely nuts yeah it's crazy so more often than not i find when people are doing uh what they're passionate about they usually have people in their lives that are doing it with them maybe friends or yep. family yep. um do you have a crew of individuals that kind of <sighs> been going on this journey or been helping you with it for sure yeah i've kind of uh i've made some of the best friends i've made honestly through this um like 
producing journey that I've been on for the last couple of years, stuff like that. Right. Because like realistically, we're just a bunch of nerds sitting in our basements on our computer talking about music. Right. What, well, what are you doing? Well, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, dude, you need to try this. You need to see this. That's right. That kind of thing. So it's like it's a small little hive mind of like a, a tight knit little group. That's right. So I got that, and fucking, it's it's great. That's right. I find uh, what you said is really funny because that is the case in most. Uh, things people do is a bunch of nerds yeah yep. like myself and tanner we do this and people are like oh that's pretty cool right. you put yourself out there and yeah like, listen there's like a lot of editing there's yeah. a lot of sound there's a lot of wrangling people like yeah. there's Lots a whole thing that goes behind the scenes that's yeah. like not glamorous not fun which is super nerdy yeah and it's work yeah for sure people yeah hours, on, hours on the computer hours on the computer yeah. and then you get you get an hour to perform here but it, right. it really pays off that's right like yeah. it's and I, that's my next question that you totally went in that direction so thank you for that yeah what is the amount of time that is involved in putting your show together for something that is anywhere between 30 minutes to an hour and a half what like what kind of hours are you logging in for that uh to prepare a set um that's that's finding music buying music yeah getting your set list together uh producing music mastering your music so everything sounds good right um it's probably different for everyone but it's it's many 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 hours right yes now in regards to the equipment that you use. Yep. Now, for years, I'm a little bit older than you gentlemen here, yep. but I remember watching DJs on the ones and twos, record scratching it. Yeah. And so I, I've tried my hardest. I've, ha I've had some friends who've allowed me to like destroy some equipment, yeah, yeah. and yeah. I'm horrible at it. Yeah. So then a few years ago, I met a DJ and they had like the different uh, turntables that didn't have the real records. Right. In my, like, even harder. Yes. Even harder. Yeah. So like, how do you even get started with this um well like my story personally like uh i started making mixes on my computer okay with mouse and keys like okay. without without any controller at all and i did okay. that for a while and then once i actually was able to get my hands on a little controller right like it i felt like i was already home right okay and then now it's just like the the devices just keep getting bigger now we're playing on cdjs which are like the inter industry standard Right. So like once you're comfortable on those, you're basically good to play wherever. Anywhere. Yeah. So are you traveling? Like, because it's a pretty big board. No, nope. I uh, all I bring is my backpack and my laptop and USBs. That's right. Yeah. And then you're ready to go. Yeah. So like normally the venue will um, have all that stuff. Fantastic. Yeah. And so you've been performing a lot more now after the pen. Well, since things have Come opened up a little bit. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, is this your first time out of province, or have you played out of province before? I've played out of province before. Um, like I said, I did a Frenzy Fest last year, which was um, yeah in Alberta. Okay. So this is my second time out to, to Alberta, and uh, my second kind of show with Affinity. So, nice. Yeah. And so what's your long, big-term aspiration? Where would you hope to potentially get this to? I, I just love to keep making music that you know makes me happy, that kind of stuff that like yeah. is fulfilling. Um, and yeah, just kind of see where it goes. Like I'm having an awesome time. I've met a lot of cool people. So yeah, yeah honestly, it's been really good. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, listen, usually these shows are a little bit longer. I have a million more questions that I can ask, but I know you guys got to get going, yep. get sound check and everything going. Yep. So thank you for coming. Yes. But before I cut you loose, everybody gets a shameless shout out or plug. So you got the mic, the lights, the camera. Have fun. Okay. Yeah, you can find me uh, on my Instagram, at, uh, rbiggs, R-B-I-G-G-S underscore. And uh, yeah, you can find me on Facebook as well. And um, yeah, that's about it. SoundCloud, sorry. Um, Spotify, Apple Music, R period, bigs, two Gs. There we go. Thank you, my man. I appreciate your time. Thank you. And I can't wait to talk to you again and again. And as you uh, get bigger and bigger, yeah, man. we'll be following you, my man. Cool. Cheers. Awesome. Well, Fort McMurray, Wood Buffalo, and the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. Thank you so much for tuning in. It does mean the world to me. Big shout out to our title sponsor, Noral Toyota. We appreciate your support. Everybody else, I hope you're having a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace. What a deadly old way to end another morning show. Later, boss. Talk about quenching your ugly thirst.